a forum to discuss a matter such as the conflict in northern Uganda is like talking about the elephant. Nobody is wrong and no single perspective is the correct one. The Parliament and Uganda and some of the matters that would have been raised by the minister would sort them out at home. But I would like to probably say certain things from the perspective of somebody from northern Uganda, from Acholi. If somebody dies, mourners will come. There will be all kinds of messages reflecting the perspective of that death. But people will come, help you, and will bury your dead. As the honor of that death, you take comfort from the participation of so many people from the contribution that they make. But at the end of it all, they will all go to their homes. And the consequence of that death will remain. And this is an element that, to me, is very important. Mm -hmm. Because while the conflict in northern Uganda is still hot and visible, there are people who will be willing to stick out their necks to pull a few dollars from their pockets to make their contribution very honestly. But when that situation is overtaken by time or other events, the people of Northern Uganda will remain with challenges that are consequences of this conflict. And I would like to deal with those and so that all this that have been said can be put in perspective and the discussions that we'll make will make both short and long term sense. In the immediate aftermath, the challenge we face are acceptance of what happened. It's not very easy. Even death is not very easy to accept that it has occurred and that you must move on. And there will be bitterness that must be recognized and addressed so that what happened can be accepted and a new platform for moving on generated. The other one is like you're hoping that there will be no more death in the home state because the challenge of death is so much. And so the immediate desire of people who have gone through conflict, us in the northern Uganda, and I believe the rest of the Uganda generally, is that we are not going to go back into conflict again. And so any residual element of conflict that threatens the peace that is already existing becomes a real challenge that we must deal with. You must have read in the papers how passionately we talked when there were suggestions that there were new rebel movements emerging out of northern Uganda. In fact, Charlie Lacoyne's name even got mentioned. And we say, anybody who thinks that we in the north would leave the peace that we so sacrificed for and go back to conflict, that person must be mad. Or is a real enemy of the north. Because why would we desire conflict when we have seen the consequences for so long? The other element is that, like the mourners who come, even your enemy comes to bury you, help you in the burial. <laughs> what you pray for is that there will be sustained goodwill after all is done. That the people will look at you in the way they looked at you in conflict. In other words, looking at the consequence of that conflict as part of the challenges that they must continue to support you. If they don't do that, and uh, the PRDB becomes like Mabugo money, when it is all eaten, you are still in big trouble. Because the consequences of conflict in the North are huge. I just want to give, just for a reminder, because I know many people understand, know this. 
the disparity that this conflict has created between the people of northern Uganda and the rest of the country is just mind-boggling. When we went to universities, the ratio of people who came from Acholi to join medical school was no different from any ratio from any part of the country. Now, if you get an Acholi who is going to medical school, he did not study or she did not study in Acholi. And the chances are that that person was paid for by either us who work in meaningful position and our number is dwindling very rapidly, or our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. What is going to happen with peace if we don't recognize this and find ways of addressing it? It's a, it's a deep, big, big problem. However, in spite of all this, as people have said, if you go to Google, you will not believe it sometimes. First of all, we have a huge pool of Acholis and Northerners outside who have made huge contribution. Investing home, sending money to support people, and that kept the place with waters. Many of the hydropower potential areas are in Acholi were boiled. But most important, we have the people. And really, everything that we must do must be investing in the individual Acholi child. So that two generations down the road, they are equal to the rest of Ugandans, if we want to address the conflict in the north.